In this segment, we will review the project window, where most of your action in Cubase happens. The project window consists of the following parts. The tracks list, where you create project tracks. The inspector window. This is where you access the functions and parameters of the selected track. This part of the project window is called the event display. And this is your main work area. On top is the toolbar, info line, and the project overview. You can resize your project window. By using these sliders, you can zoom horizontally and vertically, or you can set a desirable zoom from this drop down menu. This slider here lets you increase or decrease the graphical representation of audio files and this helps make your editing job easier. Keep in mind this doesn't impact your volume, just the appearance on your screen. In the project ruler, you can position the right and left locators, move the cycle region, Right-click to set the appropriate display format. The same menu is accessible under this button. Left-click on the ruler and drag the mouse up and down. That lets you zoom in and out. Here you can see some of the global parameters which we set up in the project setup window. Next, let's check the toolbar. Right click. This opens up the menu where you can choose which sections of the toolbar to hide or show. You can also create your own custom toolbar here. You can have more than one project window open at the same time. However, only one window can be active at the same time. Press the first button on the toolbar to activate a project window. Constraining delay compensation is used to reduce latency during live recording or while playing VST instruments in real time. Set constraint delay compensation like this. File, Preferences, VST, Delay compensation, Threshold. However, if you don't hear any delay, just leave this button alone. Remember, Cubase has a built-in automatic latency compensation for hardware and VST plugins. The next segment of our toolbar is the performance meter. The left part shows CPU usage and the right part shows your disk cache usage. If either meter reaches the top and flashes red, remember it's time for you to go easy on your computer. You can apply, as I mentioned before, the freeze audio channel functions. Disable your unused tracks and or process your MIDI tracks into audio files. The next segment is called View Switches. The first button hides or shows the inspector. The next one shows or hides the event information bar. The information bar shows information about a part you've selected. You can modify information by entering a new name in the Name section or a new value in the numeric fields from the pop-up menu. 
and that pop-up menu is accessible with a right click. You can select parameters to show or hide. And you can set up your own custom presets. The overview gives you a snapshot of your entire project. It makes navigating through your project much more convenient. The blue box here represents the visible part of your project. You can drag, resize, or even create this blue box in different locations. The next button opens the pool window, and the last button opens the mixer panel. Automation mode options, and the automation return time. I'll be explaining these options later on in this tutorial. Now let's hide a section of the toolbar to free up some space on our monitor. Here you can set your locator positions and jump to the left and right locators. These are the transport buttons. You'll be familiar with these standard symbols. The play order controls work with the play order track. Next. We have the time display section. This shows your primary and secondary time displays. You can switch between them by clicking here. In order to show the rest of the toolbar, let's resize your project window. In the Markers section, you can jump between the first 10 markers of your project. The Tool Buttons section. You're going to be using these tools a lot. The first button in this section is Object Selection. It lets you move, select, resize, The small arrow at the bottom right corner indicates that there is more than one mode for this button. Normal sizing resizes or moves the start and end point of an event. Sizing moves both contents and events and resizes in the direction you move your mouse. Sizing applies a time stretch, changes the timeline of your event, but it keeps the event itself the same. Range selection. This lets you make selections across multiple tracks. Once you've made a selection, you can copy, cut, delete, and drag these sections. Using the Split tool, you can split events, and using the Glue tool, you put them back together. The Erase tool will erase a selected event or part from a track. The Zoom tool, this lets you zoom in and out. Click and drag to select the area you want to zoom in on. And to zoom out, hold the control key and click. You can also move the slider, the mute tool. 
This is handy when we don't want to hear a particular event or events, but we don't want to erase them yet. You can mute one event by clicking on it or many events, clicking and dragging over the events you want to mute. The Time Warp Tool. We're going to cover this one later in this course. Next is our Draw Tool. This allows you to draw an automation line and to create empty parts on tracks. This tool is used in combination with the Draw tool. The Scrub and Play tool are next. In play mode, you can monitor an event when you click and hold your mouse on it. In scrub mode, you can monitor your event by playing forward and backward. Your play speed depends on just how fast or slow you drag your mouse. Under File, Preferences, VST, you can adjust the speed and volume of your scrub tool. The last tool in this section is the color tool. To choose a color, click on the small rectangle under the tool and then apply this color to the event that you want to color code. Now let's hide some tools to free up some space on the toolbar. The Nudge Palette section contains the following functions. Trim right, trim left, move left, move right, trim and right, and trim and left. You can edit more than one event at the same time. Next we've got Auto Scroll. When this function is active, the event display will automatically scroll forward during playback. The Snap Quantize section will be covered later in this course. The last section of the toolbar is the Color Selector. Each color in the drop-down list has a name that makes the process of choosing your color easier. You can change the color of selected parts and events. and set up your own custom colors list. Click OK.
and your new color appears here as well as here. This concludes our segment on the project window.